Did you know that Nintendo was founded in 1889, where the company sold hand-painted playing cards? You're listening to the Xbox Hub podcast, the official podcast of the XboxHub.com. For the latest Xbox news, reviews, videos, and opinions, make sure you visit the XboxHub.com. But for now, settle down, get comfy, and open your ears for some podcast delights. Hello, welcome to the Xbox Hub official podcast, episode 118. My name is Gareth Bryan, I'm going to be your host. On my virtual left is Mr. James Burks. How are you doing, James? Hey, hey. I'm not too bad, thank you. <laughs> How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Hey, hey. Great to be here. Oh, that's what I like. <laughs> very good. Um, on my virtual right is Mr. Paul Renshaw. How are you doing, Paul? Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm doing good, too. Thank you. <laughs> I think we should all have a, uh, the catchphrase of hey, hey when we introduce hey, ourselves hey. on the podcast from now on. I like it a lot. Um, I need to call you something else again, Paul, then. <laughs> it's a good job you didn't, Gareth, otherwise yeah. <laughs> me and you will fall out. I know. Um, but, and my virtual opposite is Mr. Neil Watton. How you doing, Neil? All right. Oh, you enjoy him with a hey, hey, Oh, Neil. you've ruined it now. Sorry. <laughs> How you doing, Neil? There's no hey, hey, malarkey here. Is yeah, it, I'm all right. Yeah. It's your first one of the year. Back. Yeah. <laughs> of the year, is it? No, it's not. I think it must be. I think it definitely is. is. It definitely mm. is the first one of the year. We've we've we feel honoured that you have come amongst us. Well, it took me until March, didn't it? <laughs> it did. Um, Neil, what have you been doing this week before we dive into all things games? Uh, not an awful lot, to be honest. Oh, I don't know why um, I brought you on. No. Yeah, I don't know why I'm here either. Really, <laughs> I, I do have two wine gums sitting next to me, and I'm Ooh. contemplating. It. I'm contemplating eating them during the podcast, but I don't know if that's bad form or not. What are the colours of the wine gums? Let's know that first of all. Well, I, I'll, I'll tell you what. Yeah. If you get the colours right, I won't eat them during this podcast. Okay, I'm going for orange. I'm going for red. Green. Well, that's yeah. one out of the two. Oh. Oh, yeah. James has got both of them right. How Great. do you do that? Dave. Well it's, done. it's that camera he's got in your living room. <laughs> but, but as Gareth's Thank the you. host, as Gareth's the host, I'm going to eat them right now. There you go. That's what we're going to hear. Lovely. Enjoy. Chewing. <laughs> uh, that's Neil's week. He's been... Well, he's been he's had those wine gums in his <laughs> eyes for a week. And now he's going to chew. Paul, what about you? Well, since your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a month ago. Wow. Um, Paul, what's your week been like? My week has been jolly exciting. Um, I have three things to share with the Ooh. group. Today, I went to the doctors. Um, it's another one of Paul's health updates, so strap in. Uh, Part six. Um, yes, exactly. And my blood sugars have now reduced from the high of 108 to 34, which means, technically You're speaking, winning? I am no longer diabetic. That's well done. Great. great news, Paul. So well that's fantastic news. All this dieting malarkey has paid off, so that's made me happy. Well done, Paul. Paul, um, just before um, just before you do your when your health checks, just, just check with us before... If it doesn't, if we don't want a really serious one. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fine. It could go either way. My heart's in my mouth when you say, I went to the doctors. And... If, I, if I come on and I'm like in tears, then, you know, I've probably had bad news. But yeah. if I'm sounding quite upbeat and start with a hey, hey, yeah. you know, it's not going to be don't anything okay. bad. It's good. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. What's your um, next bit? The second thing was I went and did a car boot sale on Sunday. Um, which was thrilling. I've not done one for a very long time. And I got together a car full of the finest tat from our household. And the people at the car boot sale went absolutely mental for it. I came back with over £300 in my pocket, ah, which I think is amazing for everything good. being 50p. So, That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's that means your all. house was full of shit, wasn't it? Uh, what do you mean, was? <laughs> it still is. Are you amazed by how car boot sale people kind of work? They get up at oh. 6 o'clock in the morning, and they go along and they buy stuff that nobody else wants for 50p. Do they do, they do the old haggling and stuff? Oh, God, do they? 
you know, yeah. how much is this? Oh, it's a pound. Will you take 50p? No, I said a pound. That's what I want. <laughs> the worst thing is, when they say take 50p and then give you a 20 quid note, is it really oh, changed? Hey, don't even. <laughs> <laughs> One bloke came along. Um, I had a load of um, metal stuff to sell that I'd bought mm. cheap from one of our stores. Um, and a bloke came along and went, he haggled me down to £32.50 mm. and then proceeded to pull out a £50 note and say, have you got change for this? I was like, are you Brilliant. having a giraffe? This is a car boot sale. Why am I going to take a £50 note from some bloke at a car boot sale? That doesn't look dodgy at all, does it? <laughs> but you did anyway. But I did anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just I, I did then go and check it on under the uh, the note checker in one of the shops on Monday morning, and it is genuine, so I was quite surprised. Just in case someone's joining us, this is the Games uh, podcast. It's, uh, um, not a health <laughs> wine gum or car boot the sale. Wine, car boot sale, <laughs> wine gums. We see all of life here. Yeah. Um, and yeah. finally, the right, third one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think third. it says something about our age as well, do you, do you not think? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Possibly, Possibly yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Um, do you know what? I'm going to hold on to the third one <laughs> for another time. <laughs> oh, wow. Because <laughs> I think uh, it was such a such a win for me today. I'm going to hold on to that one, oh. and then I'll use it next time I'm on. So, Great. There, you go. there you go. James, what have you got to, to top this? Pancake day. Oh, Jesus. You are pancakes? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I'm, go I'm waiting to see how you tie it into Xbox. That's going to be great. Did you have Xbox-shaped pancakes with an X on? Oh, no. I had a jam pancake with sprinkles in. Oh, no. No. And followed by a banana pancake with golden syrup. No. No, James. The only proper topping... For a pancake is lemon and sugar, lemon juice and sugar. Yeah, that's wrong, all. No, I'm not I though. <laughs> I'm with Paul on this one. It what? has to be the little squeezy plastic lemon and then a sprinkling of sugar. Never. There you go. you got I've um, I'm just I'm just writing um the last <laughs> podcast. So I think I'm going to say to listeners, this is the last <laughs> podcast. We... After this, we've gone so far off the rails, we can't even see the track. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just doing the notes now. At least we've so, got variety. We have got a variety. I mean, that's true. You don't you don't hear about Pancake Day, arguments wine about gums. lemon, wine gums, and health checks. It doesn't happen. <laughs> I've got nothing exciting this week. Until I've just got films. I, I've just been watching films. I've just watched two really bad ones. Um, Venom 2, I don't oh, know really? why I watched that. And The Kingsman new movie, which was... I don't know why I watched that. I knew it was going to be bad, it was bad. And I watched a film called The French Dispatch, which I really enjoyed. It's on the Disney Channel at the moment. It's a Wes Han- Anderson film. He does films like um, The Grand Budapest Hotel and Isle of Dogs. If you like Wes Anderson, you're going to like these films. It's very good. That's my recommendation. It's not as exciting, is it? Mm. At all. There's wine games, there's oh, the whole thing. Speaking of things that I've watched, mm, yeah. I did follow one of James's um, recommendations mm. on the old Netflix and started mm. watching All of Us Are Dead, oh. which is quite good. So I can echo James's recommendation from the previous week and recommend that people watch it because uh, it's a very good zombie film and I'm really hoping that there's a really mean girl in it in a pink cardigan and I hope she gets eaten. Because she's not very nice. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I appreciate that, Paul. I appreciate you what, that. mate? Yeah, yeah absolutely, I mate. I, I, listen, I listen to what you say, take it on yeah. board, and then watch it. Um, yeah. You know, because I thought it's it's full of the things that James likes. It's got zombies in it, and it's got um, young Korean girls. So, <gasps> perfect. Good. Um, let's go to games. Let's go to games. We're 10 minutes in. Uh, yeah, I'm going to start with you before we go to the one because. Oh. Yeah. Oh, hello. I, I better wake up then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say to you. You reviewed a game that involves some cars. What is it? Yeah, what, what game was that, Gareth? It was called Dirty Grid. <laughs> That's a difference. <laughs> it was cool. Yeah. I called it before people behind the curtain. I kept saying Neil's going to talk about dirt. I'm like, it's not dirt, it's grid. Grid, something else. What's it called? Grid Legends? 
Grid Legends, yes. Oh, okay. um, the latest from Codemasters. Um, obviously, it's part of the Grid franchise. Follows on from, uh, I think it was just called Grid, wasn't it? Back in 2019, maybe. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a racer. What, what would you like to know, really? <laughs> it's, like, it's like I'm interrogating you and you're not giving out many answers. I like that. You know, what do you want to know? What do you want? Well, what, what, what would you like to know? Let me talk, let's talk about the career, the story career mode. Well, there, there is a career mode, mm -hmm. um, but the main thing is the story mode, and it's called um, something that I've completely forgotten. It's our oh, Driven to Glory, which is um, very close in title to Drive to Survive, which is the F1 Netflix documentary thing which I think starts next week, actually. Season four starts next week on Netflix, so give that a watch. Um, but yeah, Driven to Glory has been put together, and it's basically like sitting for a season of Drive to Survive, um, but removing all the F1 stuff and sticking Grids TV in wherever they can. Um, it probably comes about because Cody's are now under EA, and we know that EA likes to fit kind of a weird little story into their sports games and, and whatever, don't they? Mm. Um, and so that's what they've done here. It's it's clever. It's not particularly long. It's only 36 chapters, which sounds a lot, but that's basically only 36 races. And when it's kind of different scenarios that you kind of jump into and a race is over in five minutes or so, it doesn't last an awfully long time. Um, but it's well put together. It's fairly well acted. There's a couple of bits that I thought, oh, that's a bit too cheesy and a bit <laughs> too kind of, yeah, just following the script. I would have liked to a bit the actors to kind of go off script a little bit if they're allowed right. to do that. Um, but it's but it's clever and it's it definitely looks looks really good. It's been put together really well. Oh, okay. So credit goes there. But yeah, that's the, that's the story mode. Can you fall in um, love in the story mode? Uh, no, you can't. No, it's it's got all the usual motorsport kind of tropes. So it's got like um, a a guy who will smash you off the track at any given opportunity. Okay, it's it's Was got a woman. <laughs> no, it wasn't called Neil. No. Um, oh, and actually, fact, yeah, you play as driver twenty two, so that kind of sets a bit of mystery, um, and you never actually see driver twenty two, but you're always the one kind of being talked to down the camera. Oh, so you're um, not yeah, seeing that's... you're not seeing a you know you haven't got a persona like in the journey on FIFA when you see Alex as a character. You're no, 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 no. no oh, you're, okay. You are just driver twenty two, um, but but yeah, it works. Um, there's I don't want to give too much away from the story, but there's there's a crash. Um, there's some more crashes, and there's some other crashes, and then you <laughs> have to just race until you win. Okay. Uh, it's it's just a bit too scripted. Yeah. Is it? Do you have to deal and, with sponsorship deals? Uh, no, huh. you leave that to the <laughs> the owner of the team that you're racing for, Seneca right. Racing. Okay. Uh, but no, it's good. 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 And the rest of it's yeah, good. Is the rest yeah, of it? Yeah, yeah. There's um, there's obviously online multiplayer. You wouldn't have a racer without that. Um, there's a career mode which is really deep. It goes across loads of different um car classes and varieties. So you got. GT cars, uh, you got little minis, you've got trucks, you've got um, lorries, pretty much a bit of drifting. Not a big drifting fan. It's all right for a drifter. I don't know if anyone knows a drifter in here, Paul? No, I've, I've never heard no. of drifting. What's that about? No, I don't know. I thought maybe you'd like to tell us being a, an ex UK an champion ex, and whatever. Ex, no, I was never UK <laughs> champion. I represented the UK at radio control drifting as well. Right, you okay. know. Right, so you're boring us now. Carry on. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, the, the, there's drifting there if you like that kind of thing. Um, does the, it, race, the racing's decent enough. Does it look good? Uh, does it look as good as Forza or the new Gran Turismo? No. Yeah, okay. Is Frankly, it as good um, as Forza? No, but Dirt 5 wasn't as good as Forza, and I grew to love that more and more as the weeks and months went on. Couldn't get couldn't get off of that game. I'm kind of thinking I'm going to get 
the same kind of vibe from this. It's just going to keep, you know, those games where you just think, oh, I'll just go in for five minutes, do a quick race, and then like an hour's gone, and you've done five races. Mm. It's, it's one of those games you can just jump in at any time, play it for a bit, jump off. Uh, it just feels a bit, not like an expansion to the old game, but there's not a lot more to it apart from the story. Okay. Same same tracks as well as the old game, which is a oh, bit disappointing. God. For for somebody who's grown up with Codemasters games and has played pretty much every race that they've ever created, I knew the tracks like the back of my hand. Is there new tracks? There's a few new ones, but most of them are just recycled. Oh. They look good. They look good. There's no debate in that. Um, but yeah, they're just all recycled, really. Oh, God. Um, yeah. That's put me off. Straight away, even though I was <laughs> never going to play it. Um, thank you, Neil. That was that That's was, right. That was detailed. Okay. Yes, question. Oh, oh, oh yes, oh, James. James was four out of five. James, sorry, your question. What was the damage mechanics like? It's good because it used to be good. You really um, like the car? No, not really. You you can what? switch it all off, um, but it's not like in. In um, Forza Horizon 5, you know, you go tumbling down a cliffside and your car writes itself, windows are all smashed, a few dents mm. in the side and whatnot. There is damage, but you can quite easily just drive into a wall and wall ride it. Um, oh, wow. And so, the, yeah, the damage wasn't really something that, that, that played any part, really. For a start, I play on either bumper view or um, yeah. behind the wheel camera. So, don't really see it but the times when i went out to the third person view and had a look around it wasn't it wasn't anything massively brilliant it's pretty because that was all that was one of the main differences between that and many other games back in the day it's really yeah. bit, it's when the damage and mm. it's a love yeah. cars you can turn it all off as well that's the other thing so you can just have a visual yeah. or whatever so I like the differences between mine and James in his questions. James asked a very practical question. I asked, "Can you fall in love?" That was mine. That says a lot <laughs> well, about me. I kind me. of skimmed over that, didn't I? <laughs> you did it very, maybe, very professionally, though. The DLC. Oh I, yeah. I, I think, I think I'm right in saying that Codemasters are going to push out some DLC for the story oh, to continue that. that. Might be good. I think they've got one of those brilliant roadmap things that our developers love at the moment. Yeah. And uh, they've promised a bit of that, but um, yeah. But no, it's a good, it's a good racer. Good, but it's not a wow racer. Mm. Good. Okay, um, Paul, what's Hello. your game? What sort of game are you going to talk about? Not the one, not the big one. We're saving the big one because it's the only we'll game I've played, we'll... and right, you can we okay. can both talk about that together. We'll save the big one then. Um, I will talk in that case about. Um, the new expansion for Destiny 2, The Witch mm. Queen, which is quite a lot of fun, actually. I'm really enjoying it. There's uh, a very good story arc in it, um, which has been building up for quite some time, um, which I'm not going to spoil, obviously. But the new weapons and the new mechanics that they've introduced are very good. For instance, you've now got a glaive which isn't a weapon I was aware of. It's basically a, a spear with a great big long handle that you can use as a shield, you can use to shoot things with, and you can use to stab things in the face. So it's very exciting. Um, add to that the, the bump in power and everything else, and uh, yeah, it's, it's very good. Lots of fun. Is it? Sorry, I haven't done Destiny for a while. So, have you got new planets to explore? Yeah, yeah. There's well, actually, it's. Part of the story of Destiny 2 so far is that certain planets just disappeared. Um, something to do with the darkness. But now, <laughs> yeah, it's not not the rock group who believe in a thing called love, you understand. No. I mean, the darkness in the game. Um, Justin Hawkins was not to blame. <laughs> um, the, the story of this one is that Savathun, the Witch Queen, has now brought Mars back. But she's also then turned it into her throne world, if you like. So she's um, reshaped it into what she wants it to be. So it's very, um, it's very well done and it's very well explained in the story. So, yeah, it looks fantastic as well. 
Okay. Uh, James, you got questions for those? <clears throat> um, can you fall in love? <laughs> Constantly, mate. Every every time, you know, the, the way those thrall look at me, I always think we are having a moment, and then they try and kill me. So, throwing it to me now. I mean, good. Um, I've heard about Paul. I've heard a little bit about. Is is crafting quite complex in this one? Is what people uh, yeah, complaining about? Crafting's very good. There's oh, a thing it? called the relic on Mars, and basically, as you go through and do stuff, you collect um, bits of or and this that and the other and then you can use the the relic to either shape a weapon so you make a weapon from scratch if you get the recipe for it or you can then take a weapon you've already got and reshape it and give it upgraded attributes for instance but it's it's really really deep and it's really really good um Neil, have you, have you got any questions about story, or, or are you interested in the Witch Queen? Uh, I've, I've, I've got no no questions. I'm not interested in it at all. <laughs> okay, good. Neil loves Destiny. <laughs> no, I don't like Destiny. Good. I don't even think I've played Destiny two. Oh, have I even? I don't even know if I've installed it or. D- no. Well, I think you need to and give it a try. No, I don't uh, think. Yeah, I can't so. see him on it. Um, it's good that we enjoy Destiny. We mean James played. We did quite a lot. We didn't we, James? Yeah, it was hard coming. In the end. <laughs> Good. Um, now, we're talking about that big game. Uh, James has got it. What, what, have we, what have we got, James? What's the game you've well, got? <laughs> it's a game you've only waited to hear about. Yep. It's Touch and Funny. Yay. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Is it real? What's that name about? Is this well, in the special know. James section yeah. of the store? This is it. Well, I mean, you think so, but I'm actually reviewing this game. <gasps> And it's about Tux and Fanny, um, the two characters that live together, and we join their pixelated point-and-click adventure at the most crucial stage in their life. They went to have a kickabout, but the football has been deflated. So your goal in the whole game (coughs) is to inflate the ball. (laughs) You've got to find the tools and do the usual adventure based puzzles and little mini games and that that's the end game is to inflate the ball. Right. Uh, and it's, it's it's a point and clicker, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's very uh abstract, is that the word or surreal? It's quite surreal. Well, I think surreal the word is weird. Yeah, well it's quite a turn out now. I mean you you just literally wander around the house and Going outside and looking at the flowers. I'm looking at the birds. I'm looking at some images of it now. So, oh wow! So it's like a really. It looks like an old school Spectrum game. Mm, yeah, it looks look horrible. Ooh, really, it like really well. <laughs> My <laughs> God! You, you've got to watch the trailer. I think the trailer is brilliant. Okay, mm. right. I mean, but, yeah, you, you, we'll put the trailer in the show notes, shall we? But um. Yeah, I think the definitely. trailer is amazing. You've got you've got to watch it. Okay. Maybe laugh. It looks. Yeah, I mean, I'm intrigued. So, yeah, well, there's a sequence that stands out, and it's you have to make a cup of caramel tea so that Tux can get a good night's sleep. Um, and then he goes into a dream, and you go into his dream. It turns into a like a Ludo piece. In the game Ludo. Mm. It looks like that. Then he turns into a TV and a shark, <laughs> eventually. Um, and that's just to get the number for part of a safe combination. So it's all very weird. And is the pump in the safe? It, no. Is, oh. the in the safe is, the is there an option to just... Could you just go on Amazon and buy a new pump? <laughs> No, but they've got a computer, and you can play games on the computer, like mini games, and you go on the internet, and sell That's... pictures, sell pictures that you draw. <laughs> in the they game. sell pictures that you draw. Yeah, you can sell the pictures on the in-game internet to then use the money you get from that to buy more mini games. I love, I love this game. It sounds great. It, it, it is a, a very much um, hidden treasure. Ah, yes. 
It is much better than you expect. Are you finished the review yet? Is it out? It's, it's nearly ready. Okay. It won't be out by the time you hear this. Right. But well, it'll be soon. Soon. Okay. Look out for it. Good. Do you know how much it is, James? £8.39. Oh, that's, that's not bad, is it, I suppose? No, it's a good price. I think they take about four, maybe five hours tax. You get everything. That's more yeah. than a pound an hour. <laughs> well, I mean, we put it out that far, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, let's move on to a smaller game than Tux and Fanny. Um, but a game that I've been playing, but also Paul's just put his review up and live on the site. You can see it now. It's Elden Ring, which um, came out last Friday. Um, and Elden Ring is the new game by the Dark Souls and Demon Souls and uh, all the other things creator. And if you've been under a rock, you're not gonna, you might not have known about this. But Paul's written a lovely review for it, so have a look at that on the site. It's great. He's given it a five out of five. And I think I've chatted to Paul as we played through it. The great thing about this, which makes it very different, it's not a linear journey. You kind of do a little mini tutorial at the beginning that kind of gets your eye in, and then you're kind of in a kind of open world. And at the moment you leave this, go into this open world, you've got a boss in front of you, this knight on a horse, um, and you can attack that boss and have a go at it. Um, um, but, but I you're, don't recommend it. But you're die quickly. But <laughs> yeah, the great yeah. thing about any of this is you can move on to something else. You can you don't have to. You know, there's guidance about where to go with the story, isn't there, Paul? And I think for you, because yeah. you were reviewing it, you were probably ploughing ahead quite quickly. Is that right? Do you think? Um, I spent quite a lot of time looking about and doing some optional things mm. like there's a bit where you just come out and then you jump up some rocks because I'd seen something at the top and I wondered what it was. And it was like a statue. And when we interacted with it, there was a beam of light came out to it and pointed somewhere. So mm. obviously I had to go and see mm. what was down there. And it turned out to be a sort of optional dungeon with a stone dog, cat, fire breathing oh, yeah, yeah. boss thing. Yeah. Um, so I managed to kill that. And then... Um, the way the, the game tries to guide you where to go is when you find the sites of grace, occasionally you'll see ones that have a, a, a bit of light coming off that shows you in which direction you should be heading next. Um, so then I went and ran off and sort of ran through the first section, ran through the second section. I'm in the third section now. Um, and it's, oh, it's, it's, glorious it looks absolutely fantastic some of the vistas especially when you look at like the great big golden tree in the distance and everything else that's just beautiful and then you know it's it's the combat that that is the best part what, what do you think Harrison? yeah no absolutely i mean i'm not i haven't played a game for a while when i've gone to bed at night or the next day and i'm thinking about it and i'm thinking about oh maybe how can i do that if i try that when i go back so I'm thinking about it constantly, and that hasn't happened for a long time. When you're going, maybe oh, I think I know how to do that boss now, or I think I know how to, I really want to have a go at this. And I think it's the open world that I really like. And I think, you know, people talk about Breath of the Wild, they kind of, that has that influence. The idea that you can go, I wonder what that is in the distance. And then you go and explore it. And the world feels so, you know, nuanced and different, and kind of like, there's, there's little dungeons here, there's little secrets here, there's... There's, there's just be, there's this kind of trolls at one point near the beginning who just been all chained up walking along with this huge kind of chest um, with this kind of like um, with some soldiers following it you go I'm going to have a go at this I want to have a go at this I'm trying to get this um, and of course you're, you're, you're dying a lot you're, you know it's that kind of thing but it doesn't feel as it doesn't feel like Dark Souls and you're dying but you're back into a corridor and you know I'm just going to go back up that corridor and then fight again you can die and then go do you know what I'm going to wander off I'm going to yeah. level up and that's what I've been doing. I've just been still mucking around, just leveling up. And I've, I've got to, uh, at the moment, I think I'm level 37. And I went back to the knight with the horse and then just killed it instantly. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, because I've just been mucking around, you know, doing stuff. So I think it's, you've got more of a choice about how to, how to do so stuff. So have you done any of the story bosses yet? No, I've only literally gone into the first area. I've just thought, oh, I'll have a go at this now. I've been literally doing all the mini dungeons, all the little extra secrets and stuff, just mucking around. And it's given yeah. me, what, 10 hours of that? 
that's been great. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I think I'm a bit overpowered now, maybe a little bit. But then I guess, something did kill me. Like, right you'll away. say that until yeah, you get to the boss, know. and then you go, oh, maybe dead. I need some more levels. They will want to cry. <laughs> um, now, James has got some questions. Neil's come on in the last minute, so I don't expect him. He might have questions. But, James, you've prepared some questions for Paul and myself, maybe. Well, I think you've covered a little bit of it, but yeah. Hmm. I mean, you might be able to help here, Gareth. But what, I'm sorry? I want the story to it. <laughs> is it. Is it much of a story to digest? Yes. Um, Tell me Next question. <laughs> well, powerful. you can't with a game like this. The joy of the story is is in the exploration and is in the finding it. Mm-hmm. The more people that you talk to, the more of the story that you get. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, there's there's a definite overarching story, but depending on the NPCs that you find and speak to, you'll find out more of the the details. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's very much like the other games where the story isn't given to you on a plate. You have to go and look for it. Um, but, yeah, the, the story that's there is very good. I mean, the, the basic premise is that the Elden Ring sort of held everybody together in harmony almost. Mm. And then it got broken. And all of the this Queen Marika had the ring and her children all have bits of the ring now. So you've got to go and get the bits of the ring back, get some super glue and stick it back together again. Um, So, yeah, and that should bring back joy and peace to the world, etc. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's very, very good. But it's lots of... I think it's lots of little mini stories. I think the open world really does put you in charge of, like, you are part of that narrative now. Rather than before, I think it was kind of like a very linear single thing, so you were more dictated. It does really feel mm-hmm. like this is my world to kind of like I'm creating these little stories, but there are lots of lovely little secret things hanging around. In the other games, some of the items used to have these really kind of grandiose descriptions of what the item was and what it meant. I feel that that's gone a bit, it's just gone and gone. This item does this, <laughs> it does this. <laughs> And it's good because you kind of you've got rid of that kind of storytelling through some of the items, mm. but it's yeah, it's yeah. I'm not. It, 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 I, I think Paul said it right. You're not getting um, spoon fed it. You're finding it as you go along. Much but if you want it, you can find it. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. You have to go and yeah. hunt it out. And people yeah. will be debating about what things mean for ages, and there'll be lots of forums and discussions about exactly what the stories is and what they think it mm. means. Because I think this is the same with Dark Souls. You know, people have their own interpretations of it as well. What it might mean. So, could I ask you about the different classes? Jesus. That you can choose. <laughs> do, or weapons, even. What weapons do you use? Oh, can there's... you buy them anywhere? Normally, you'll get, you can either buy weapons from merchants or enemies will drop them as you mm. defeat them. Um, but the other thing with the weapons is not only are the different classes, so there are slashing swords there are thrusting mm-hmm. swords there's axes there's pole arms there's spears there's wands there's clubs hammers everything you can possibly think of but there's also a kind of um you can upgrade the weapons as well so if you find a, a an anvil for instance you can take smithing stones and make your existing weapon stronger rather than possibly swap it for something that you might not feel as comfortable with so I'm, I started as um, a samurai just because she looked cool. So, um, And I'm still using the first sword, the first katana that she's got, but it's upgraded to plus three, so it does a lot more damage. Mm. Um, but, yeah, there's there's loads of different classes, um, including the traditional uh, sort of deprived, I think they used to be called in um, in, in Dark Souls, where it's just like a bloke in a loincloth with a stick and that's all you get um and yeah there's there's so and the the character customization is very deep as well so you can make whatever you want to make basically if you wanted Mm. to make a replica of yourself in the game then you can do Mm. yeah that's a good thing Mm. i mean i need to upgrade the weapons but how would you get like upgrades for your character can you upgrade um, the character at all? Yes, absolutely. Mm, you have to get to a certain point and then mm. a, a lady appears and tells you that you're maidenless, 
which I thought was a bit rude. Um, mm. And then basically you, from that point on, as you kill things, you collect runes and you can then spend those runes to upgrade one of your attributes, whether it be strength or vitality or whatever it may be. And every time you increase one of those by one, you go up a level. So like Gareth says, he's level 37 now. Um, so he will have upgraded 37 times his his stats to make himself stronger. Good. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's absolutely right. Um, there you go. James, any more questions? One more question before, we, cause before Neil's fall asleep. Neil's yeah. gagging to get in and join in. Yeah, he's gone. I've got a question. Um, oh, good. <laughs> it, it, I know there's come up in there in yes. the ring. So have you tried it? Have you had any interesting experiences? Did it work well? I spent ages trying to get a multiplayer, like summon someone in. And I got one by us and I read, and it was a bit, I think Paul's written about in his review. He's, it's not the, sometimes it's not the best system. Um, it's not as easy at the moment, I don't think. I think it would get better. Um, I got someone in to help me and it was brilliant. Even they looked great. They looked, they, they ran at the boss and got killed in one shot. <laughs> it's the funniest moment. I was like, ah, oh, it's taken me <laughs> half an hour to sort this out. Um, yeah, so that was my own experience. But you can do, you have your own, which I'm finding really effective. You have these, um, you can have your own summons, which are like, um, at the moment, what have I got? I think I've got some jellyfish. I've got a pack of wolves that I use a lot that you can take into kind of like battles with you or kind of areas. Um, and they're great. They're great for a distraction, actually, more than anything else, where you can kind of go behind. Um, but yeah, that, I think there's you can also have someone kind of like NPCs really, but sometimes they haven't been that effective for me. I don't know about you, Paul. What do you, what's your thoughts on um, someone? Yeah, they, well, I think I mentioned it in the review mm. that if you get somebody in to co-op to help you, obviously they're going to be better at the job than no. the AI spirits that you can summon. No, you say that. I mean, it, there's nothing. Well, I've had some, I've also been, I've had some very good help. Um, I've also been offering my help to people earlier in the game as well, okay. because you can also put your summon sign into the summoning pool and then people can bring you in to help them kill their boss. Um, so that works very well. The bit where I say summon me seems to work brilliantly. Uh, the where I've struggled is getting people into my game to mm. help me. Um, I keep I quite often get a message saying uh, unable to summon cooperator mm -hmm. and then all the signs vanish all the signs that you can summon them from disappear yeah and that obviously is a bit annoying I'm, I'm hoping that that will get patched because this wasn't an issue um, in the network test that I played a while back so yeah um, apart from that it's it's very good very good Neil what's your question Final one. Oh, I've got, I've got two actually. Oh. Um, the second one I'd like to go use first because Paul was just talking about it. You were talking about a knight on a horse near the start that, that was killing you straight away. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Could you? So, are you also saying that you could summon, like Gareth could summon Paul, who is a higher level, into his game, and he could just come along and kill that knight for you? I think, yeah, absolutely, yeah, pretty yeah, much, yeah. 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 So, oh. The last time I was summoned to somebody, he was level 14 and I was level 38. So, yeah, you can certainly be a lot stronger than the person that brings does, you in. Does that, not, does that not make it just a bit cheap and easy? Oh, mm. I can't be bothered to do this. I'm just going to get somebody to come well, in and do it for me. Well, the, the tree, I think in the Dark Souls world, that's always been a case of people going, no summoning, no summoning. That's how you, that's how you do it properly, you know, without a summon and all that stuff. But, you know, they made it the game that way. That's the whole thing. They made it so it can yeah. be a cooperative thing. So I think it's... And if some people might just want to play it like that, they might want to just... You know, do it with me. Basically, people. basically not play it. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, yeah, just, just live off other people. Yeah, I'm completely Elden Ring. How many bosses did you take down? Oh, I didn't do any of them. Yeah. So other people <laughs> did it all for me. Yeah. <laughs> there are certain bosses that you can't do. You can't summon. So there, oh, okay. you know, even the mini bosses straight away in the, in the first area, you, you you can't you can't use summons. Ah, so uh, okay, that makes more yeah, sense. I think so, maybe, a bit right. later on, maybe right near the end, you might not be able to. I don't know. I don't, maybe, yeah. yeah, I mean, th there are limitations. When you get summoned to help somebody, you can't go through the whole game with them. There's certain sections that you're allowed to be in. So normally it's like you'll get summoned near the boss. 
So you go in, fight the boss, jobs are good, and then off you could pop back to your own world. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I think if I was to put a wish list together, I think a, a fully co-op Elden Ring would be awesome. Mm. Just running around with yeah. a group of your mates, that would be yeah. brilliant. Absolutely. But it's, I, with Paul, Paul, read Paul's review, it's great. Um, um, but it's a great game. Really worth one of the best games of the year so far. Probably the best game of the year so far. And it's, mm. um, five out of five from Paul, and that's, I think it's pretty much across the board, really. So, yeah. It's great. I'll ask another question. Go on, Neil. Last one. Before we go, we've got to move oh, I've on. Got, I've got two more. Oh, my I've God. Got to ask <laughs> go on. I'm on here every once, uh, okay. once a year. Once in a blue moon. Maidenless. I saw a headline saying Maidenless is the biggest insult for an, an Elden Ring player. <laughs> I didn't read the article because I couldn't give a damn, but talk to me about Maidenless. Maidenless. Do you want to take this one, Gary? No, I don't want to take this one, Paul. It's a word oh, to right. you. Okay, thanks. Um, basically, the, the Maidens are um, people that help you out. Um, as as I understand it, I mean, when we join the game, we don't we have we don't have a maiden, if you like. So you are um, maidenless. We are maidenless, which is you know, as I said, I think I said in my introduction was rude, mm-hmm. but you this did. girl, um, Marilka, I think she's called. Mm. Um, she offers to play the role of the maiden for you, and it's her that lets you level up and takes you to special places and stuff so being you can actually refuse to let her help you so i don't know what would happen if that was to happen i don't know whether you would then be able to level up or not um i guess that's something i'll have to try out on another playthrough and see but it was yeah it's it's an interesting setup there's lots of people just doing the uh, completing the game with a ring controller, a Wii ring, ring controller, or stuff like that already. <laughs> so it's like people will do stuff when they when they have to level up and just finish it. It's mad. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. You got one more question, Neil? Oh one? yeah. Third, third question. Um, shall I buy Elden Ring or Tux and Fanny? I think you'll uh, enjoy Tux and both. Fanny. Good, I'm not buying both. Can't afford both. <laughs> You're not going to play Elden Ring. Right. Sell one of your bikes. Uh, then you I'm could not, afford all of the games. Uh, I'm not doing that either. <laughs> Such a funny it is. There you go. Yeah. Um, gentlemen, we're going to go straight. We're not going to do any more games. I know you've got more to talk about. Well, this is a gaming podcast. I know, we're not. We're going to go into... <laughs> we're going to go... We're not even going to do news, Dag. There isn't much news around. It's terrible in the world at the moment. We're not going to talk about that, but it's awful. Um Maybe we're just going to quickly say Xbox Game Pass from March. We know that Guardians of the Galaxy is coming, which is annoying because I bought that in December. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but it's a very good game. I, I didn't. I'm going to play it via Game Pass. Best way. Um, you're also going to have Far Far Changing Tides. I think I reviewed that. It's a great game coming out. Um, it's really, I really enjoyed that. Kentucky Route Zero. I think I gave that a five about a year and a half ago. That's a brilliant yeah. game coming out March 10th. Lawn Mowing Simulator. I think I reviewed that as well. Yep. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, but this this one's coming to Xbox One because when Lawn ah. Simulator came out, it it only released on Series X, um, ah. and you couldn't play it on your Xbox One. So from whenever it is, tenth of March, I think maybe, mm-hmm. um, you can play Lawn Simulator on your Xbox One via Game Pass. So oh, you yeah. are sorted. So I've, I've got this in my head right now. Paul is going to be playing Normo Simulator on his Xbox Series X and his son is going to be sitting just behind him playing it on his Xbox One <laughs> together <laughs> via Game Pass. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm sure that will be the case. I won't be playing for <laughs> Horizon 5 or uh, Elden Ring anymore. I'll definitely be playing Lawnmower Simulator. Yeah. Good. It's a good month for Game Pass though, isn't yes, it? Yes, so I mean, this is early on as well. So you got... So you've got Far Changing Tides, which you gave a four and a half out of five. I did. We've got Kentucky, which you gave a five out of five. James, what did you give Guardians? Four, four and a half. Four and a half as well? I think it was four and a half, yeah. Lawn, lawnmower Simulator is a five out of five every day of the week. Absolutely. Clearly. So what more do you want in life? More. Good month. Hey, it hasn't started yet. That's only up to the 10th. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, right, we're going to do a quiz because I've done the bloody quiz. And we're going to do it. So in case we've run out of time. Um, Neil, have you done a quiz before? 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is um, called, I don't know what it's called, 20 questions. Let's call it 20 questions because there's 20 questions. Um, <laughs> 20 questions on a roller. And it's... <laughs> the soap is counted properly. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm going to write an end going, they were only 19. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you these questions. And if you get a question right, you buzz in. We can do the buzzers in a minute. You get a point if no one gets the question right. The point rolls over to the next one. Ooh. Yeah, so the next one will be for two points and on and on and on. So you could, you could do very well. Um, none of you get 10 questions right, they could be here, be over. Um, but let's do the buzzers. So, James, what's your buzzer noise? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Paul, what's your buzzer noise? Um, I will go <laughs> with the old faithful meow. Oh, nice. Neil, what's your buzzer noise? I'm not here to make silly sounds. That, that's, that's, too, uh, that, that's too long that for a buzzer noise. Buzzer. My, yeah. my buzzer is Neil. <laughs> do you know what? When I was doing this quiz, I went to myself, I bet Neil would do his buzzer, it would be called Neil. And you did it. <laughs> that was absolutely <laughs> what I thought. It's great. Not saying you're predictable or anything, but... <laughs> no, but I'm also not a fool. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got our three buzzers. Now, I think as well, the other rule is you can only have two guesses per question. Out of 20 that. questions? Oh, right. Yeah, Perfect. no, not out of 20 questions. You, question. you have two guesses. Yeah, you have to hold off until the pot gets high enough. Yeah. <laughs> Are we ready? Meow. Oh, oh go on in. Paul, oh, this is your first question. No, 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 no. That was yeah. me saying I was You're ready. Just testing your buzzer. Just testing the buzzer, yeah. yeah. Okay, question one. What nationality is Call of Duty character Soap McTavish? Meow. Paul. British. Whoa, 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 whoa. No. Yes, he is. Neil. N Neil. What is it? Is he, is he Scottish? He's Scottish. That's the answer I've got on the card, oh, Paul. But you know. Oh, no, no, we're going to go. Scotland has not I know. left the union no. yet. I, that's what I've got on the card. It's he mine. is British. I've got that it on my card. That is outrageous. I need a steward's inquiry yeah, for that it. one. The steward's oh, he's, he's European. Oh, oh he's, he's a human. <laughs> he, he's that's, Scottish. That's, that's outrageous. Point to Neil. Well done, Neil. Just one point. Just one point. Yeah, it's a point. Your question. No rollover. Have you got a pen and paper? You write. I've got to write this all down. Yeah, Just put you down Good. there. Okay. Question two. In Street Fighter, who gave Sagat his chest scar? Meow. Paul. Ryu. Ryu, well done, Paul. Good. Oh, I thought it was Ryu. Uh -huh. No, it's Ryu. Oh. Come on, James. It's Ryu. Ryu. I think it's, it's Ryu. Ryu. Yeah. So he's got that one wrong as well. Okay. <laughs> question, question three. What is the name of the weapon store in the GTA series? <laughs> oh. um. James. Guns, guns, guns. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> that's, a, no. That's, that's Borderlands. <laughs> Paul. Oh, yeah. Is it Guns R Us? No. Neil. Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Guns and Ammo? No. You got one guess each if you want to take it, or you might want to pass it. <laughs> James. Is it guns in fun? <laughs> no, no, these are all good though. Yeah. Um, I, I, Pass you know, I, I'm, I'm such a big fan of um, GTA that I should get this, but uh, I, I honestly don't know. No. no? Um, Do you want to pass in yours, Neil? Neil, Neil, Neil Watton. That's what I'm going to say now. Watton. I can't keep saying Neil, Neil. Yeah, go on. Watton, Southampton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 is it guns and bombs? No, no, it isn't guns and bombs. It's some of the worst answers I've ever seen. It's ammunition. Oh, oh, ah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. good, good. Well, it's a rollover. It's a rollover. It's for two points. Right. The next question is worth now. Yeah. Um, what was Super Mario originally known as? Meow. Paul. Was it Jump Man? Yeah. I can't take that, Paul. What? James. 
It's super jump man. It's super jump man. Oh, oh I'll tell you what, Paul, it's all against you, isn't it? I'll tell you what, I give up. This, <laughs> I don't I, know why you're here. This is clearly, honestly, uh, I think we're going to have a Twitter. Correct, we're going to have a Twitter poll after this one. <laughs> Scottish is not the same as British, apparently, <laughs> and Jumpman is not the same as. Oh, Super I give up. Um, James, well done. Two points to you, James. So James Thanks. is in the lead at the moment. It's very close, though. Yes, it's, it I, I hope you don't feel dirty about taking that point, James. I don't. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Next question five. What is the profession? Of Alan Wake. Oh. Yeah. I think James might have just got it there. What? Oh, no. He did oh, yeah. not. No way. He was the last one. Don't worry. He was. Let, let, me, let me go because I have no idea. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> go on, James. What is it? Is, it? is he a writer? He is a writer, yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm just a carpenter. Good. And, uh, well oh, no. He's a writer. That's Jesus, yeah. <laughs> Good. Well done, James. <laughs> 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 Question six. Can, can we can we have a, a score check? Please? Yeah, it's James has got three, Paul's got one, and Neil's got one. Marvelous. Loads to play for though. Um, in Half Life Two, what creature is Doctor Kleiner's pet? Lamar. <laughs> James. Is it a cat? No. Meow. Paul. Is it a dog? No. <gasps> Neil. Watton. Is it a spider? <clears throat> no. Okay. James? What's the name of it again? In Half-Life 2, what creature is Dr. Kleiner's pet, Lamar? Okay. Is it a shark? No. Oh. Shark? Where's a shark? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking's really disappointed it wasn't a shark. <laughs> uh, meow. Paul. Is it a ferret? No. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Now, do I take a guess or do I let it roll over? Oh, oh tactics, tactics. Let's, let's roll over. Okay, good. The answer was head crab. Right. Oh, you're joking. Oh, I was close though, weren't I? You were spider. close, you were close. Lamar yeah. the head crab. Yeah. Yeah. As close as bloody British. Are we ready? <laughs> let's yeah. go. What year was the Xbox 360 released? Come on. Now, James. Eight, ooh, uh, 2008. Neil. No. Neil. Neil. What? 2000, 2007. No. Oh, fuck. Oh, oh, oh no. Neil. How rude. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> Paul, Paul, Paul. What was it? 2006. No. Neil. Was it 2005? Neil. Neil. What? <laughs> Is it 2005? Yes, 2005. Mm. Well done. That's two points oh, yeah. to Neil. Oh, it's hotting up. Um, God, we've got loads of these questions. How long have we got? Okay, yeah, good. Right. Oh, we've, got all, we've got all night. Let's carry on. Yeah. Don't win. worry, Gareth. This is great. Neil, three. Paul's got one. And James has got three. Question eight. Paul was robbed, though, however. <laughs> but anyway. What was the last Guitar Hero game released called? Neil. Oh. Watson? Guitar Hero Live. Well done. One point for oh, Neil. Well Brilliant. Done, Very yeah. good. Question You're nine. Such a nerd, honestly. Sorry. <laughs> Which I've co- still got the guitar under me stairs. Which Call of Duty game has sold the most copies? Yeah. Oh, Paul? Modern Warfare 2. No. Neil? Watson? Infinite Warfare. No. Uh-huh. James? Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. No. One guess to each <gasps> left. I mean, it is. It is that one. Neil? <laughs> Watson? Is it, is it Ghosts? No, that's your guess is gone. Uh-huh. James? Is it Black Ops 2? No. Meow. Paul? Is it Black Ops Yes, Call of Duty Black Ops. Yeah. Yeah. Get in. I mean, we're, we're, we're shit at this Get in. <laughs> well, it's got a point there. Well done, Paul. So yeah. it's Woo-hoo. you're still in the lead with four points. Uh, question 10. What was the first Tom Clancy game to be released 
with his name. Neil. Who is that? Me. What's Obviously. A, what's a... He's the only one called Neil. <laughs> Was it um, Ghost Recon? No. Meow. Hmm. Paul. Was it Hawks? No. It was Hawks. It wasn't Hawks. No, it was, Hawks it, was, was it, the it, flying one. Oh, right, no. That was, that was, that was, that was, that was no. Tom Clancy's no. Hawks. Oh, no. That was later. James. It, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas. Was it what? Rainbow Six Rainbow Vegas. Rainbow Six Vegas. Oh. No. Oh. Neil? Hmm. Watson? Was it? I don't think it was Sprinter Cell, but I'm going to go Sprinter Cell. No, sorry, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've heard of building suspense, but... <laughs> I, was done. I was thinking wow. about somewhere else. Um... Um, <laughs> I was thinking about what you're on for your teeth. I was just about to go to the right tab to check if it's still there <laughs> yeah. on Skype. Yeah. 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 Um, who, who went in next? <laughs> James. Is it Tom Conti? Ghost Recon? No. <laughs> I'm thinking <Meow. laughs> Paul's last <laughs> guess. That's it. You is that that one? Yeah, Paul. Is was it? Uh, no, because that was. Oh, um, was it the division? <laughs> no. Okay, it's rollover time, which is good. Um, okay. But it was Tom Clancy Rainbow Six, but not Rainbow Six Vegas. No, so it's a bit harsh. That's why I was pausing for a long up. time. Do you, do you have the year of release of that? No, not on me. I might be able to get it in a minute, but not yet. Come on. Uh, um, Half a job, Braley. <laughs> Unbelievable. Right. <let's> <laughs> Neil's got four. James has got three. Paul's got two. For a oh, rollover for two points. For two points, yeah. What was the code name of Microsoft Connect? Okay. James. I forgot. Project Orpheus. <laughs> Project Orpheus, no. Mm. Mm. Oh. I don't think uh, I know this one. Neil. Watson. Was it Aria? <laughs> no. What was that, Aria? What that was, was that? a Boston Killer Instinct. Mm. No, I don't know this one. It oh. might be another rollover. I think I think we should just roll it all oh. over to the last oh. question. Oh. James. Project NATO? That's it, James. Oh, well well done. done. Natal. It's good. What is um That was some quick Googling, James. Well done, mate. Um <laughs> <laughs> is that two points, James. I can't remember. Yes, it was. Three. Uh, two points. Three, I think. No, it's not three. No, it was two, you Cheater. James is in the lead. James was five, Neil was four, Paul was two. Next question. What virtual currency does Fortnite use? Okay. Yeah. James. Is it Euros? <laughs> no. Neil. <laughs> Meow. And um, Watson? Bucks. Sorry? Meow, 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 meow. Bucks. No. Meow, 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 Paul? meow. What's it then? Is it V Bucks? V Bucks, yes, it oh, is. A round four. One point to pull. The three. Oh god, this one here. Okay, here we go. On which fictional planet is Gears of War set? Meow. Paul. Not a clue. Sierra. Sierra. Well done, Paul. That's four points. So Neil's on four. Paul's on four. James on five. Oh, question come four. On. Quest, no. Question fourteen. What is the name of Lara Cross Butler? James. Is it Winston? It is Winston. Well done, James. Yeah. This is going <laughs> six point. Well done. Well done. Well done. Where the Where hell did you, did you get that from, from James? Yeah. <laughs> Great. All I could see is him wandering around <laughs> yeah, yeah. with a rattling tray. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Question 15. In Dead Rising 2, what food tames Snowflake the tiger? James. Is it about Cheetos? No. Mm. Meow. Paul. Is it sushi? No. 
Neil. Watson. Is it a carrot? <laughs> no. One guess each. Uh -huh. James. Is it a banana? <laughs> no. no. I, I haven't got a second guess. Mm. Paul? I'm um, meat. Just meat. I'm not going to take meat. I need to know what no. type. Oh, come on. Well, you no. need to know whether it was an Aberdeen Angus pit. No, what's a medium rare? <laughs> No, you've had you had oh you've passed your no oh, I right. haven't go on. It goes up, is, it, I is it, it a zombie hand? No, it isn't. You can't go for that. No. Paul, yes. you're one guess left. Um, I haven't. I've had two. I said oh, I mean, yeah. and you didn't Meat. accept we're, we're, we're it. We're all just rubbish. It's steak. Oh. Oh. I did say oh. steak. I said yeah. Aberdeen Angus steak. No, that was your thing. That was not your thing. It's a Oh, good lord. Yeah, yeah. Question right, 16. Roll over time. Oh, two points. What company is a parody of Facebook in GTA 5? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> James. Is it book race? <laughs> no, it isn't. You got that wrong. No. <laughs> uh, uh. I, d I don't play GTA. I feel yeah. that GTA questions should be outlawed. Yeah, good. I think it's going to be a mail over. It's good. Give me another roll, ever. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't no, know. no. Anyone else pass? Are we going to pass? Yeah, yeah pass. pass. Um, it's Life Invader. So oh, this is for oh. three points, isn't it? Is that right? We didn't get anything on yeah. the snowflake. Yeah. What, what, what question three? numbers? This three seventeen. Points. This is question seventeen. Oh. Which company was the Atari name sold to in 1998? Oh. James. No. What did I get wrong? Mm. Oh, it's irritating. Nil. What in? In 1998? Mm. Was that? Yeah. Nintendo. No. Meow. Paul? Was it Namco? No. <sighs> Three points. It was on that program, wasn't it? You remember that Netflix series? It was. It was on yeah. there. Oh, Sega. I can't remember. Which company was the Atari name sold to in 1998? No, I don't know. I'm, no, that's I'm happy to roll this over, over again. Yeah. James, are you happy to do that as well? I can't remember guess. Go have another guess. You got one more guess. He's just go he's just googled it. <laughs> I did wonder what that tapping noise was. Good, go, James. What? 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 what, what, what say, go, um, <laughs> 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 yep. Is it Sony? No. Oh, good. We're going to roll it over for four points now. Wow. Um, and the answer. Getting tense now. The answer was Hasbro. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. Mm. I do not. How many years did it take to develop Nuke Duke Nukem Forever? Of oh, course. Cool. James. Is it eight? No. Neil. Yeah. Watson? Twenty. No. Meow. Yeah. Paul? Eleven. No. One guess each. Mmm. <laughs> 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 Duke mm. Nukem forever. Meow. Neil. Who went first then? Paul. Me. Paul, go on. 14. No. Neil. Watson. 25. No. James, you're the only one with one more oh. guess. Go on, James. 13. <laughs> no. No, it was 15. Mm. I, I knew it was a lot. If you were it was a lot. We're up to, yeah. is, this, is this a five point question now? I think this might be five points, isn't it? This is a big one. Yeah. This is really take time. Now, most of you would have, most of Switched you would off. have got these questions because if you listen to the <laughs> podcast over the last 116 episodes, most of these answers are on the podcast at the beginning of these things, uh, as that one was. What, including the one who sold, who bought Atari in 1998. Yeah. Yeah. Why was that on the podcast? It's always at the beginning before it starts. Did you know? 
Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So what you're so saying is fact, if you listen to the podcast. Yeah, if you listen to the podcast, you might have known this. Uh, especially the last one. What, what he's also saying is he's got 117 other questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of them are. Not all of them. This one isn't on the podcast. Right, here we go. Right, five points. This Who is a big one. Who is the director of Bethesda Game Studios? Oh, um, Neil. Watson? Is it, is it Todd Howard? That's correct. Well done, Neil. That's a no. five oh, Neil's five. Won now. Anyway, wine. just got to finish off my wine gums. Uh, yeah, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Victory wine gum. The last question, to just, uh, just for fun. For, well, you're not even going to get second place. It's not fun. I, I want to really hammer home this win. <laughs> Chris said, where does Little Nightmares take place? Uh-huh. Neil. James. Is it on a boat? <laughs> I was more asking the name of the place more than anything else, but that's, that's not my order. Sure that. <laughs> yeah, that, that isn't the question you asked, to be fair. <laughs> Where does the yeah. nightmares take place? Yes, anyone else? Is the Neil. answer in the, in the dark? Oh, what? In Six's basement? No. Well, I don't know. I don't care anymore. I've won, so I don't <laughs> Paul and James, do you still want to play? Um... <laughs> No, is it in an orphanage? <laughs> no, Paul's gone. James, you give it up. It's the answer is the moor. Oh, oh of course. Yeah, yeah. I think the name of the boat in it. <laughs> I, don't the the boat. I don't think it is the name of the boat. No. <laughs> oh. um, final, sure. final scores. Neil's got nine. James has got six, and Paul's got four. Well done, Neil. Very good. Well done, Neil. Neil. Really good. Good Chris, I like that one. You like that one a lot, don't you? I knew you would. Come back next week for the other one. Yeah. Um, Gentlemen, what are we looking forward to next week? (laughs) Neil. Well, I was going to say, you need to do something. It's it's full on, this. I've got questions up here. I've got things up going everywhere. Come on. Neil, what are you looking forward to next week? Uh, Me. Um... I think Drive to Survive is out next week on Netflix, so I'll watch that series four of the F1 documentary thing. Um, and that's probably about it, really. Oh, hmm. there's a little game called Tunic coming out. Hmm. I don't think it's next week; it might be the week after. Um, but it's we've got an interview up on site with the um, the dev who created it, and it looks bloody brilliant. So um, read the interview. And then keep an eye out for that. Okay, it's good. It's going to be good. James, what about you? Um, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it, but the new wrestling games out next week. WWE 2K 2K22. Oh, with with um, the roster of one person. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a massive roster. <laughs> people aren't even there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that'll be fun. Good. Think, yeah, um, what about you, Paul? Um, well, I'm not looking forward to a wrestling game. Um, I suppose the only thing I'm really looking forward to is just sort of finishing chatting to you guys and diving straight back into Elden Ring. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> it's it's like you say, it's just it takes over your life, doesn't it? Yeah, you think, it oh, if I'd have just dodged at this point or whatever. So yeah, I'm going to look forward to playing more of that. I would say I was kind of thinking about Gran Turismo. It's coming out on PlayStation Five. It's coming out on Friday. It's getting some nice reviews, but do I need that? Do I really need no. that? I've got so much on the moment, yeah, and I'm still playing on no. Horizon. So, yeah, um, no, but that looks good. Um, gentlemen, thank you so much. If we want to talk to you, find you. Paul, where would you find you? Uh, you would find me on the Twitter, where my handle is at Xbox Hub Paul. And James, what about you? Um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram, at OKUKO. And Neil, what about you? Uh, Instagram, Neil363, which is also my game attack. Oh, and I don't know why I went, oh. And you can oh, find me. Add me as a friend. <laughs> add, add me. Add you, yeah. What, are you talking to me? I'm not going to add you. He's just asking you to yeah, add yeah. him. You never I know. I, I keep sending the old friends request thing. He keeps declining it. He's done it for like 10 years. Right. Right. So rude. Um, you can follow him, find me on GB Briley on things. The things in the, fu- things in the future, future things, um, the internet of things. <laughs> the internet of things. <laughs> uh, but for now, gentlemen, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye.
You've been listening to the official podcast of the xboxhub.com. You'll be able to find all the notes of this show at www.thexboxhub.com slash podcast. You can also check out our social feeds on Instagram and Twitter at the Xbox Hub and search for the Xbox Hub on Facebook. 